Hello everybody, it is the drip king of wrestling, Jimmy Bebe. And today I am going to be talking about something that's bothering not only myself, but a whole lot of wrestling fans out there. But before we even get to that subject, I'm going to ask a very, very simple question. Uh, what do WrestleMania 34, WrestleMania 3, WrestleMania 31, WrestleMania 32, and WrestleMania 10 not have in common with this year's WrestleMania? I'll go ahead and give you a little bit of time to think this one over. Let's see if you can get it. Okay. If you haven't got it by now, you're probably not going to get it. The answer is very clear. It's very simple. All of those WrestleManias had fantastic intercontinental title matches. This year, we don't even get the opportunity for it to happen. They're just not even putting the title on the card. And what makes it even more silly is the fact that there's a United States title that could easily, very, very easily fill that void because it's a mid-card title. It's the same belt, essentially. Um, and then when you look at the fact that Finn Balor and Tamian Priest are involved in a feud right now around that title, it really makes you go, what the fuck are you thinking, WWE? What are you thinking? Put the, so put the title on the card. Put the match on the card. I'm speechless on it. I don't get it, and I know everyone out there feels the same way. So we're, we're going to just go over those five WrestleMania Intercontinental title matches just so we can see, like, what it is we're missing out on this year and how they could have easily fixed it, even though I just gave you the match they could have made. We're, we're going to go back to it in just a minute. WrestleMania 34, you had Seth Rollins versus The Miz versus Finn Balor. Oh, imagine that. Finn Balor, his name get, got brought up again right there. Um, it's very very simple right there. You you put <laughs> three guys in a triple threat around one of those titles, mid-card title, and say, hey, go out there and steal the show. And... They almost did that. That was a fantastic opening match for the show, and it got the crowd hype. And it it might be the last WrestleMania in which the Intercontinental Title has felt important. I, I'm off the top of my head. I'm just I'm just spitballing that one. I don't know for sure, but uh, we need to go back to something like that. And it's real easy. Again, if you look at Ricochet, Humberto Carrillo, and Angel Garza, there it is. That's that's three guys you can say, hey, go steal. Go steal the show, man. Just go out there. Do what you do. Here's 15 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever you want to give them. Go steal the show. And those three could probably do it. But instead, you put them on SmackDown, you're probably going to give them a real small time limit and say, all right, just don't do anything too crazy. Hopefully, that's not the case, but we'll see. But that's just one instance right there where problem solved. Just a simple match. Just a simple match. All right, so we go from a three-way match to just a simple one-on-one -on -one match at WrestleMania three, where you had Ricky the Dragon Steamboat versus Macho Man Randy Savage for the Intercontinental title. I don't need to tell you how, how great this match was. If I do, then I, I'm not even going to waste some time. Just pause it or go watch it after this video. It set the bar for what an Intercontinental title match at WrestleMania should be. And again, there was no bells and whistles attached to it. It was literally just, hey, guys, go out there, steal the show. Let give the people a reason to be invested in this title, and they did, and it lasted for so long. So much like 34, where they just said, "Hey guys, go out there and do something," and they did it. It same way here. It's not hard, and that's two very very simple solutions you could do. There is plenty of room on the card. There's two nights you could fit eight matches on each one. So far, night one has seven seven matches, and then night two only has five. So. Even if the two rumor matches do happen, you still have a, a spot for one last match. Mid-card title, <laughs> Damian Priest versus Finn Balor, and give them an opportunity to do something like Savage and Steamboat. And no, they're not Savage and Steamboat, but give them the opportunity to do something to that level. Why not? Okay, so now we'll go to WrestleMania 31. We had a three-way match, we had a one-on-one -on -one match, and now we had a multi-man ladder match between Daniel Bryan, Wade Barrett, our truth Luke Harper, Dean Ambrose, and Stardust. And again, just like the other matches, you say, here's your platform. It's for the Intercontinental title. Guys, just go out there and steal the show. Now, did they steal the show in this one? I don't I don't necessarily think so because the WrestleMania 31 as a whole was a very eventful night. But this was the first match on the show, and it really set the tone for the entire night. And that that's what you want in an opener. And... With an Intercontinental title ladder match like that, things are going to get crazy. The crowd's going to get hype. 
it has meaning. It, it, it just it feels like, okay, these guys are really fighting for something that they want as opposed to just what they're doing now. Like They don't even care enough about it to defend it on a show, so why should we care? <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's that simple. We'll just go ahead and fast forward to WrestleMania 32 where they basically did the exact same thing, and guess what? It worked. Even though it was a, basically a carbon copy of the year before, it still worked. Where we had Zack Ryder, Kevin Owens, Dolph Ziggler, The Miz, Sami Zayn, Stardust, and Sin Cara. Um, and it ended with Zack Ryder, you know, he got his moment at WrestleMania with the Intercontinental title in front of his hometown. Uh, it was fantastic. It was a great moment. And it's because of that Intercontinental title. It was. It felt important to him. That moment was awesome for him because of that. He was basically reliving a childhood dream of his, and it, it, that's the kind of stuff we need with this title. It needs to feel relevant again, and something like this. They could have done a, a Razor Ramon ladder match invitational in his memory. Just basically throw in a pile of people like this and say, go out there and steal the show. <laughs> They, with you got three already for the Incontinent title with Ricochet and Humberto and Angel. Throw Sheamus in there. Throw Butch in there. Throw Kofi and Xavier in there. Like just you have the bodies for it. Go do it. You don't need to do a New Day versus those trio, whatever you want to do. It. We don't need that. We need Incontinent title match on the big show. And then last but not least, certainly not least, WrestleMania 10. We all know Razor Ramon versus Shawn Michaels. Intercontinental title ladder match. It's an iconic match, much like the WrestleMania 3 Ricky Steamboat versus Macho Man. And it revolves around the Intercontinental title. Uh, he's right here. You see him. Yeah, that's that, that. it's that simple. Just say, hey, you guys have a feud going. Go out there. Do what you do. You have that right now. Not with the Intercontinental title, unfortunately, but you have it with the United States title. So you, you could just take out the IC title and say, here's the U.S. title. Same, same thing. Same thing. You have Finn Balor and Damian Priest just go out there and do the thing. This year of all years, you could just throw a ladder match in there and say, hey, it doesn't feel forced. I get it. We're doing this for Razor slash Scott Hall. I get it. Um, but with Finn Balor and Damian Priest, it doesn't feel forced. Damian Priest lost his title Finn Balor. Then he beat Finn Balor for another chance at the title. So why not add a stipulation to it? It feels like the next step in their feud. It, it makes sense. It's not forced. But again, even if you weren't forced, you could because of this year and this year only. To put these guys in an Andre the Giant Battle Royal instead of giving them something like this is just cuckoo, banana, crazy. I don't get it. So please just take them out of there. Or at the very least, the very, very least, something happens in that Battle Royal to where a program evolves into a match on the card. Something. Please just do this for us. Please. Because... I know they're doing a ladder match for the North American title on Stand and Deliver, but that's not WrestleMania. That's not that's not what people are there for. They're going to enjoy Stand and Deliver, but it's WrestleMania is the show. A lot of the stuff, there isn't crazy stipulations. We got one where it's no holds barred with John Knoxville and Sami Zayn. Why not give us something like a ladder match, a cage, something? You got to give us something, and this, this fits in perfectly. Everybody, I, I see everybody just having the same thought why is there not a ladder match why is the mid card not on the main card it doesn't make sense so with that said they go i i laid it out for them. there's there's many opportunities for them to do something they could take the icy title and do the multi-man thing which they won't do because it's on smackdown but they could clearly just take damon priest and out give us something um so with that said that's the show thank you for watching if you liked it boom you know what to do Subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I appreciate all the love. I thank you for tuning in, and I will see you later this week as I'm going to be trying to drop as much as I possibly can for WrestleMania uh, because I'm excited. And I just want to share that excitement with everybody so that maybe it rubs off and people get as excited as I am. I'm very pumped, and yes, it is a good time to be a wrestling fan. So goodbye. Boom.